You can bet a few years ago when the Nespresso drinking millionaires who populate Martha's Vineyard were casually calling Donald Trump and his supporters fascist, they never dreamed they'd someday expose themselves as the same. And yet tonight, that's exactly what Martha's Vineyard is. It is a haven for fascism. It barely took 24 hours for residents of this all-white, wealthy summer island to band together and kick out 48 brown people who dared to invade their idyllic setting, thanks to Ron DeSantis. Check out these contrasting headlines. Yesterday, after migrants arrived in Martha's Vineyard, a community gathered to welcome them. And then today, a group of migrants set to Martha's Vineyard arrive at Joint Base Cape Cod. That was fast. Yes, the housewife iPhone group chats exploded when these asylum seekers arrived on that island. Everybody in a hurry to prove to each other that they truly are inclusive. Millionaires with $250 one-time purchases, Range Rovers stuffed with coffee-stained blankets and uncomfortable pillows from their mansions, arriving at record time at the island shelter. That was the scene when 48 people showed up. But at the same time, as with every phony liberal virtue, these people all secretly knew what had to be done. And that was happening behind the scenes. Get these poor brown people the hell out of here as fast as possible. I did not spend $4 million on a weekend house to look at this. And it only took 48 hours. Well, not even. It took 24 hours. Because rich people don't wait for anything. Thankfully for them, a Boston immigration attorney, who probably has a house on the Cape herself, rushed in to help salvage the optics of this lightning speed deportation. This was obviously a sadistic lie. Not only did those responsible for this stunt know that there was no housing and no employment awaiting the migrants, they also very intentionally chose not to call ahead. These wonderful people, who find themselves plane wrecked on our island, I have a message for all of them. You are not alone. We have your backs. These wonderful people, I have a message to you. We have your backs. Now get the hell out. <laughs> That's what really happened. Rachel Self took a break from emasculating her husband to throw a Hail Mary yesterday and try to keep the facade from crumbling around the blatant lie that is liberal inclusion. Now, nobody is denying anything that that immigration attorney just said about Republican governors. That's the funny part. Of course, they intentionally failed to call ahead and warn Martha's Vineyard. They're doing exactly what Biden has been doing for a year now. Surprise flights, dumping illegals, spreading this problem all around. It's astounding that that woman can be this uneducated about what's been happening on the immigration front in this country for the last year and call herself an immigration attorney. She's almost stupid enough to be eligible for a job in Joe Biden's cabinet. Almost. And even though DeSantis has done nothing novel here, of course, Biden's been doing it, the most astonishing part has been the reaction, again, to a Republican doing exactly what Biden has been doing for one year. Some politicians would rather not only have an issue, but exacerbate it to the extent of literally human trafficking, as you said. These are the kinds of tactics we see from smugglers in places like Mexico and Guatemala. This governor chartered two planes from Texas, uh, kidnaps 50 people. The morality of this aside, which is absolutely horrific, it's human trafficking. <laughs> kidnaps. The idiot parade charges on. These people are going to learn the lesson of the boy who cried wolf. When you scream nonsense like this constantly, like they have been for the last six years, when everything is racist, fascist, Nazi, Americans stop listening to you. Why do you think nobody watches CNN? You eviscerate your credibility. Gavin Newsom also called this a kidnapping of 48 people with a straight face. And then he said this today. Those migrants are used as pawns mm -hmm. to humiliate and dehumanize. What uh, Ron DeSantis is doing is a disgrace. It's almost monstrous. And I say that not lightly. I say that quite thoughtfully. He's got kids. I have kids. You saw those young girls with backpacks, no older than his children, my children, being used as political pawns. And now he's using it to fundraise. It's exactly the same thing as Biden's been doing for a year. 
It's exactly the same. And he knows that. Gavin Newsom is actually the embodiment of Martha's Vineyard, a rich liberal elite systematically destroying his own state because he has enough money to live above all of the damage that he causes. Just like every other rich liberal in America. Gavin Newsom doesn't have an island, but he has a house up so high on a hill in California that he can't hear the despair that he has created below. It's all the same. Newsom would never live in a state like California if he wasn't rich enough to insulate himself from the disaster it has become, just like all those liberals out there. They vote for all this nonsense because they never have to see it. It should be noted that the lesson this country needs to learn on immigration was actually once written about in a very powerful novel. 50 years ago, Jean Raspail wrote The Camp of the Saints, which detailed a dystopian future when a flood of impoverished people depart from India in a massive armada of huge ships and set sail for the wealthy and fruitful southern coast of France. The book details the chaos that ensues as the French deal with the battle between their liberal conscience and common sense. The liberal conscience wins, and the country is destroyed. Sound familiar? The book was warmly received back in 1973. It made it back onto the bestseller list 10 years ago, when the West went insane with migration, including Europe. But today, of course, it is considered racist, and you can hardly even find it unless you want to pay a lot of money for it. So what have we learned this week? Well, the most important lesson that Martha's Vineyard taught us is that apparently it is okay to not want huge numbers of migrants invading your homeland. We needed to see the pious, virtuous liberals hate it first to know that it is now allowed. They are the arbiters of right and wrong, after all, and if they can hate a migrant invasion, so can you. If even the wealthiest, most virtuous liberals of Cape Cod don't want these people in their town, that means absolutely nobody does. And you know what? That's okay. The same way Mexicans this summer have been openly hating Americans, fleeing the overpriced disaster that has become California, flyers in Mexico City that now say, new to the city, working remotely, you're an effing plague, and the locals effing hate you. Leave. Remember that story? Can you blame them? Liberal Californians who voted to destroy their own state, swiping up all the cheap apartments in Mexico City, causing the rent to double in one year? Who can blame them? It's not wanted. The same as millions of uneducated, non-English speaking people are here. A flood of refugees is not a gift. Everybody knows that. Even the people who say it's a gift know it's not a gift. They're not stupid. They're just liars. And this week, some of the richest liberals in America were forced to admit it. And that's what this was all about. That's why it was so beautiful. Nobody wants this problem, this massive problem that is being arbitrarily inflicted on the people of this country by a government that no longer works for its people.